Hey, it's Naren from Positively Sorted here and today I want to talk about some of the resources that helped me when I was first looking at hiring a virtual assistant or a VA. It's very easy to get overwhelmed when you think about thinking about taking this step. Like you're probably already overwhelmed with too many things to do. Then you have to think about creating a job description, figuring out which things you're going to delegate, whether or not you can actually delegate them, like are you better off doing them yourself or are they going to do the job to the standard that you want? It goes on and on. <laughs> so when my business first started to get going, I was in that catch-22 situation where I had new clients wanting to sign on but it was only me to do the work. Plus, I still needed to do all the other things to keep my own business going. Um, I needed help, but I was trying, trying to work out what I need to do myself and what I could delegate to a VA. So one of the resources that helped me a lot at the time was actually a book called Virtual Freedom by Chris Ducker. I don't actually know if he still does it, but back then he ran a virtual assistant business in the Philippines where they would set you up with a, a Filipino virtual assistant. These days, I think he's more of a business coach for entrepreneurs, but anyway, his book walks you through the steps of figuring out what you can outsource, where to look for a virtual assistant and the kinds of questions to ask them and sort of that getting started with them. This was really helpful for me. So there, and there are probably plenty of other places you can find that sort of information as well, but it was just good to have all of that in one place in the book. Another book that sort of touches on working with virtual assistants is The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. A lot of people have heard of that one. Um, and to be honest, I think both of those books kind of focus on working with the cheaper offshore virtual assistants too, um, just for full disclosure. <laughs> but it's still helpful information and it still gives you good, a good idea of how to figure out what to outsource and how to find the right person. So my biggest takeaways from all of that reading like firstly about getting started so one of the ways that Chris Ducker, Chris Ducker and others say figure out what to outsource is to document what you do for a week or two just write down every single thing you do and go through and figure out whether you actually have to be the person to do it or not. Another thing I did um, you can search on Google and find lists of examples of the type of tasks that you can delegate and outsource I found a couple of these lists and I literally printed out the PDFs and went through them with highlighters of the type of things that would actually apply to me. So that just gives you ideas uh, to get started thinking of where to start. Uh, I've also done a blog post about where to start when working, working for or with a VA, so I'll, I'll link that below. So when you're interviewing potential VAs, um, a lot of the time they're a long way away from you. So um, you can use Skype, Google Meet, Zoom. Um, there's, yeah, there's a, lots of different tools now for having video calls, especially now that we're all used to working remotely. Um, so it's really important to have that visual conversation with somebody that you might be gonna end up working really closely with. Um, it's great to be able to see how they communicate, see their facial expressions and body language, whether they talk with their hands like me, <laughs> um, and how comfortable they are when talking to you on video and how sort of confident they seem in what they do. It also helps to see if they're going to be able to build that rapport with you and whether you click, because that's important too. So another tool uh, for keeping track of your projects and tasks, like who's working on what for when. Um, so to actually keep track of what you're delegating and communicating about tasks with a, with a VA or a team of VAs, you need to have a good task management system. And I did a video uh, recently about Asana because that's what we use and I couldn't live without it. So the thought of communicating by email about every task with a VA just makes my head want to explode. <laughs> So a lot of people do it, but if your inbox is already overflowing, just trust me when I say that task management or project management system makes life much easier. 
Um, another tool you is a good idea is to explain how you want things done. So sometimes it's hard to explain or train people that aren't with you in person. Um, so you could do it over the phone or via email, but it takes a lot of, uh, sometimes things get lost in that sort of communication. So what I've found that works really well um, are two things. So videos and process documents or SOPs as we call them, which stand for standard operating procedures. So with videos, these are like saves heaps of time. And if you record your screen while you're actually doing this, the task that you want your VA to do, you can visually show them on the screen, explain what you're doing and, and why. And then you can send them a link of that recording, which they can view in their own time when, they, when they're ready. And then you've also got that for future use to show other people or to refer back to. It's much easier and quicker to explain things this way. So I use an app called Cloud App, or there's Loom as another popular one. And I've done another video about that um, recently as well. So I'll, I'll put the link for that below as well. So SOPs are process documents to support the videos. It's really good, a good idea to have these process documents, which are like, could be a listed list of steps or how to's. Sometimes they've got a checklist. Some people like this better when they're trying to work out how to do something, you can sort of refer to it. Um, you can add the screen recording link into that document as well. So all that info of how to do something is all in one place. And your VA now has all the information to refer to without hassling you. And the added bonus is you don't have to redo the whole training process again and again if, if, if you need to train someone else. It's already there. So the other key tools are cloud storage like Google Drive or Dropbox, or if you're a Microsoft user, OneDrive. Um, this makes sharing files a breeze. And the other thing that you'll definitely need to share is logins for all the apps and websites that you use in your business. So I use LastPass for this and it's secure and also it saves time. <laughs> There's another video about that as well, I think. But once you've found someone you think is a good fit, a really good idea is to uh, start them with an internal task that needs doing that won't affect any deadlines or clients. So there's no extra stress or pressure. So from there, you can get a good feel for the quality of their work, how they follow instructions, etc. Just remember that if they don't complete it exactly how you expected before you jump to the conclusion that they're no good, just check yourself on what instructions you gave and make sure that they were clear enough to start with. Communication is super important. So you wanna have a comfortable and clear communication with your team so that you know what their availability or their capacity might be. Um, you can work out together how they and you plan to work. So do you need them to check in daily or just a couple of times a week? Um, so you both wanna be clear on expectations, timeframes for tasks and deadlines. Um, and you wanna get feedback and comments on, on their work. So this is really important so they learn how you like things to be done, whether they need to improve for next time, but also giving positive feedback can really boost morale. So the idea is that you don't wanna micromanage, but also don't wanna leave things too free so expectations don't get met. So that's it. It's actually been so long since I first started with a VA that I'm struggling to remember what other information helped. But I think those are the big ones that helped me the most. So the other thing to mention is that it will probably depend on the level of assistant that you wanna go with as to how much of the, that stuff you'll actually have to set up yourself. So our services, for example, we actually take care of managing the tasks you give us. Um, we can figure out the best way to do it and set up SOPs for you. So if you don't wanna be quite so hands-on with training and want someone that knows their stuff, um, get in touch and see if we can help. <laughs> or yeah, another, another sort of higher level VA um, might be the go for you. So that's all for today and I hope that helps and we'll catch you next time. Bye.